The first thing we're going to do today is dry brush in the tops of the corn. Begin by wetting down some yellow ochre, thinning it out on the brush, and then doing dry brush technique, the same thing we did for the foliage, where you're pressing the sides of the bristles on the paper and lifting up. This dry brush technique is going to give the rough illusion of the tops of the stalks of dried corn in the field. Carry some of this yellow oxide down into the main like bottom section of the cornfield. As you can see in the reference photo, how some of that nice bright yellow ochre color shines through in between the darker sections. After you finish painting in the yellow ochre, you can begin mixing the darker value that we will be using for the darkest values of our corn stalks. So I would like you to combine together the yellow ochre, purple, and then some black. Repeating the same step again, we're going to be taking the side of our brush, test it on your scrap paper to make sure you don't have too much pigment on the brush, and then drag your brush up vertically. This first set of color is going to be a middle value. It's not going to be really dark. We're just trying to build up a three-dimensionality of this pigment first. As you draw up, make sure you're paying attention, looking at what the corn stalks look like. Yes, we still want to create this textured surface. However, we also want to create the illusion that there are vertical stalks growing in the corn field. After painting in that first layer of color, you can begin glazing a second layer of that same color we just mixed over top of the marks we've just made. This is going to add a, like a third layer actually of texture over this area, helping this look a lot more three-dimensional. After you've gone over that area twice, you can begin painting the area behind the tree on the left. Make sure that that perspective line on the bottom of the corn stalks is all going straight to the vanishing point on the left-hand side. After putting in that base layer of the darker color, remix your colors again, this time using more black. So I mixed together my yellow ochre, purple, and then a lot of black. This is what's going to give me that really nice dark value that I'm seeing here. We still want it to be kind of soft, so it's going to sit back a little bit. But this time when you start doing the dry brush, you're going to be using the lift off technique at the very top to where you're creating these really nice thinned out lines that are skipping. This will help create the illusion of the tops of the corn stalks that look like um, you know they're flaying out into um, the air. If you want your corn stalks to look realistic, reference the photo to make sure that you are painting in whatever you are seeing in the photo. So have that reference photo handy whenever you're painting this section. After you finish painting in the corn stalks, let your painting dry for a good five to 10 minutes and then come back to it, mixing together the color you're going to need for the trunk of your tree. For the trunk of our tree, we're only going to be using the light yellow and a mixture of purple together to create a nice brown. For only the bottom trunk of the tree, I want you to very carefully paint in a clear layer of water. So notice I'm only putting this water on the largest trunks and branches right at the base of the tree. After you've put in your water, you can pick up your pigment and then dab it into um, the top portion of each branch. You'll notice that the tops of the branch are darker in value because they're in a cast shadow, as well as the left-hand side of the trunk is a darker value than the right-hand side. Paying attention to the value placement will help make your tree look more three-dimensional. After you've placed in the basic color, you can begin using this light brown and painting in the smaller branches throughout the body of the foliage. For painting these branches in, use your smaller, smallest bristled brush. When you use this brush, swirl the bristles after you pick up the pigment to where you're combining the bristles together to a nice fine point. Press with a very light pressure and paint your branches in to where they're looking very organic like we're seeing in the reference photo. Make sure that no branch is a straight diagonal line or that there's harsh, at harsh edges to where two branches meet together. Everything should be coming out at soft angles and have soft um, angular shifts within each line. You can also take this brown and go back and add some other colors into the bottom trunks of the tree to help kind of start layering in that pigment. But continue adding in these little tiny branches into all the different pockets that you see them. 
To help make your tree look more three-dimensional, take a little bit of more purple, add it into that brown to make a darker value brown, and re-put in that darker brown in the top portion of the biggest branches at the base of the tree, and then also adding in that darker brown to the smaller branches that we're seeing throughout the tree that just have a little bit of a darker value. Whenever you are painting in these smaller branches, make sure that they're poking out from behind a highlighted area so it looks like you've really made those like, you know, ovaly, billowy shapes that we see in the tree. Using the leftover dark brown that you've made with the light yellow and purple, take your um, big brown brush that is cut off at an angle and I want you to dry brush in these darker brown bits of grass in this middle section of your meadow. Make sure that you're changing the starting point of every brush stroke and you're slightly changing the angle of every stroke so to where you're creating the illusion of realistic grass. Next, you're going to take the leftover black from the corn stalks and using that same brush again, you're gonna be painting in the darker patches of grass in that middle section of our meadow. Make sure that as you paint closer to the tree that the height of your marks are getting smaller so you're helping to show depth and space within your painting. Next, we're going to pull out the nice intense greens that we're seeing. So combine light yellow together, cyan blue, and a little bit of Prussian blue to create a really nice rich green. Then once again, using your angled brown brush, apply dry brush strokes of this nice bright intense grass on the left hand side of your composition, making sure that the height of these strokes gets smaller as you paint it further back. And this is going to be the last step of your painting, so when you're done, take a picture of the work and submit it to Schoology.